So really fortunate to have so many great speakers and guests from the federal government today. But I have a real soft spot for our next speaker, the Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Grenholm. The passion and zeal that she brings is absolutely infectious. And I'm sure that after hearing her speak, like all of us here at DOE, you're gonna be inspired and energized to do even more to fight for our climate future. Uh, Secretary Granholm was sworn in as the 16th Secretary of Energy, becoming just the second woman to lead our department. And under her leadership, we are helping the U.S. achieve President Biden's goal of net zero carbon emissions by 2050 by advancing cutting edge clean energy technologies, creating millions of good paying union clear, uh, clean energy jobs, and building an equitable clean energy future. Or to sum it up succinctly in her words, deploy, deploy, deploy. So it is such a great honor to have DOE's own very fearless leader join us in this incredibly important Innovation XLab series focused on the Arctic. Secretary Granholm, the virtual floor is yours. Okay, thank you so much, Vanessa. Hello, everybody. What a treat to be uh, on with you. I mean, I know that today you've been talking about why Alaska and the Arctic are our living laboratories of clean energy innovation and how hopefully the Biden administration's ready to help kick this work into higher gear through a through a, a whole of government approach. That phrase, north to the future, it, it embodies the same spirit that uh, Alaskans, especially Alaska natives, have a lot to teach the lower 48 on, on affordable and reliable clean energy solutions. And I just heard the tail end of the panel before and Raina was talking about if you can do it in Alaska, you can do it anywhere. Man, I saw how firsthand this state is both ground zero for climate change and a pioneer for the nation's uh, clean energy future. It came in, in August, um, which is probably kind of weenie of me, I know, but I did. But nonetheless, I it was very clear that Alaska understands the the urgency of the climate crisis better than anyone because it's warming there faster than any other state. Uh, in Fairbanks, you know, I saw the trees toppling over. I saw roads buckling from the thawing permafrost. I learned how how wildfires are getting worse every year in Alaska. That you know, local industries like salmon fisheries or, and logging are experiencing these unprecedented challenges. And of course, you know, all those changes are disrupting livelihoods and they're really hurting people, hurting, hurting pocketbooks. I, the estimates are, you may have mentioned this, by 2030, those climate impacts are going to cost Alaskans $6.1 billion in infrastructure up, upgrades alone. But in the far north, challenge has always come with opportunity and the the harsh Arctic climate, as Raina was saying, has really done this amazing thing of sparking innovation by necessity for thousands of years. And, and these recent changes are making it even more important to find new and affordable and reliable sources of energy for all Alaskans and really important for the lower 48 to learn uh, from what Alaska is doing. I know that one fifth of Alaska's electricity already comes from hydropower, which is fantastic. More clean energy sources I know are entering the mix at a utility scale uh, you know, effort from geothermal, which I love, at the China hot springs that I was visiting in, near Fairbanks, um, to the Fire Island wind development that I saw near uh, Anchorage. You know, expanding renewables also at the micro scale is going to help address the, you know, very unique energy challenges facing Alaska. You know, for Alaska's diesel dependent remote communities, especially native villages, expanding uh, clean energy isn't just about innovation and it's not just about tackling climate change. It's really about life. It's about meeting basic needs. And I know that too many rural Alaskans are struggling to to power and heat their homes, sometimes spending up to half their income on just keeping warm. It's insane. We know that Alaskan communities need Alaskan solutions, and that's why DOE is tapping on the ground expertise to support Alaskan towns of all sizes. That's why I know George Rowe was here. We have this Alaskan Energy Office, which is critically important. Um, you know, so the partnerships that we have forged over the years with native communities and climate researchers have been really essential to developing the kind of place-based solutions that are exemplified in Alaska and that Alaskans need. You know, if you look at, for example, Igiagig, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you've been talking about that today, but it's 
Uh, I love this example as one of 250 remote communities that was relying on, on a diesel powered microgrid and that's sitting on a river that's part of the world's largest uh, red salmon run and DOE worked with the community and um, the company to develop uh, and deploy to river current energy devices that function in the icy cold of winter and don't disrupt the salmon run. And they, they'll allow Iggy Uggig to hit their diesel off goal four years ahead of schedule. I actually visited that company when I went to Maine because they wanna learn from what they've done in Alaska and bring it as a solution uh, for river currents and hyd hydrokinetic power to other places as well as a sort of small solution for remote communities that are outside of Alaska, super exciting. I saw another great example of what Alaska is doing in Fairbanks at the Cold Climate Housing Research Center, where I met Robbie Strunk. He is making homes more affordable and, and more climate resilient in his, uh, in his native Quinnahawk, uh, which is a, a, a Yupik village in Southwest Alaska. He gave us some great salmon from the village as well. So to Vanessa's point, if we want to deploy, deploy, deploy all these solutions at scale, we have to speed commercialization. And that, of course, is where Arctic X comes in. We, um, we hope to combine the world-class expertise of our national labs, of our 17 national labs, with the know-how that Arctic communities have developed over centuries of innovation in the far north. So together, we can get new technologies out of the lab and into the field and onto the market and support communities and taking control of their own clean energy future. And you know, throughout the process, we're, we're going to be focused on just how much Washington, D.C., let me be clear how much Washington DC has to learn from the Arctic. This um, Biden administration is gonna continue to turbocharge our investments in Arctic energy solutions, starting with the historic infrastructure deal that you have been discussing that President Biden just signed into law two days ago. It is gonna help the Arctic make giant leaps toward a sustainable and affordable energy future. It's why Senator Murkowski was so instrumental in forging solutions. It makes this uh, historic investment in transmission to expand and to upgrade Alaska's energy infrastructure, to make electricity more resilient, more reliable, more affordable. It includes $700 million for hydropower, which is great. It includes investments to, to modernize Alaska's port infrastructure and to provide funding for clean ferries uh, and for clean buses. Billions are going to go toward home weatherization efforts, hugely important, helping Alaskans save money while you know, better preparing them for weather extremes. Um, 216 million is going to go for tribes for climate resilience projects. It's going to fund um, $21 billion in demonstration projects across the country for emerging energy technologies like the ones you've been describing, like hydrogen and, and advanced nuclear and carbon capture and energy storage, including that billion dollars for these uh, projects to happen in rural communities that Vanessa was describing. It's also going to um, invest $7 billion in critical minerals and supply chains for batteries so we can source and manufacture those batteries and cells right here in America. And you know, all of that um, is going to create jobs, 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 and more jobs with wages that you can raise a family on. And you know, once we add in the remainder of the president's Build Back Better agenda, it's going gonna, it's gonna to catapult the Arctic into this resilient future with growing local economies that are powered by clean and affordable and reliable energy because that second piece has got very aggressive tax credits to incentivize the location of the generation of clean energy solutions and the building of the products that will get us to those solutions. And we want to build local economies on that. So we in the Biden administration, we know that if the Arctic can get this right, the lower 48 can too, and we're committed to investing in, in Arctic innovation so that you know, together we can unlock the nation's clean energy future. So today's event was only the beginning. We look forward to seeing you at the next Arctic X webinar on tech tra transfer and justice in January. And where we'll know more about what 
has been unlocked in Washington, D.C. in terms of resources. And um, we hope to see you at our next in-person conference in Alaska in May. So check out our Office of Technology Transitions website if you want more in information on that. So Vanessa and everybody, thank you so much for having me. And um, as the saying goes, north to the future. Thank you so much, Secretary Granholm. Uh, every single time I hear you speak, I get more and more inspired and we are all energized now to get behind the Arctic and do what we can to support this region. Uh, you really helped to uh, bring home so many of the questions and important messages we have in the series. As you put it, this is all about life and basic needs. And through your vision, we are prioritizing the Arctic since it is a perfect testbed for harsh climates and to support place-based innovations that can help drive impact in the icy cold. And I love the example you gave on the salmon run and how that innovation is now bringing solutions to other communities. And so we're really going to roll our sleeves up and get things out of our labs and into the community. And most importantly, we're here to listen to see how we can learn from the Arctic.